My name's Claire. Um, I'm a web developer. Um, I'm not sort of standing up here as an expert on views or anything like that, but I'm just saying that um, I'm someone who's uh, uber passionate about web development and learning and uh, sharing what I've learned. Um, I'm not really in my natural habitat here, so I've got lots of notes, but I thought I'd give speaking a go anyway. So uh, my assumptions about you guys is obviously you're here, so you're awesome. Um, you've probably done your own like custom module development before. Um, I would say probably you've created views through the uh, GUI. Um, I would say basically probably more uh, API user, not GUI user, and uh, definitely a PHP developer. So if, you, if you're new to Drupal, um, but you're a PHP developer, then you could probably still follow along. But I think you'll probably get most out of it if you've actually done some Drupal development before. So nobody's left, so that's good. Cool. All right. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, exposing data to views, um, getting your data uh, into views so you can query it and present it. Um, views handlers, plugins, and hooks, and how we can use them. Uh, maybe, because uh, I said I would, uh, talking about working directly with the view object and view results, but I'm not sure about that, because I can't really think of why I would need to do that anymore. I just said I was going to talk about this, so I added it onto my, um, onto my slides. And then, if time, I think maybe just some Drush commands that I like, and then some useful contrib modules that I found. So the first thing you have to do is you have to tell Drupal that you're using views. So the first hook that you need to implement is in your .module file and it's called hook views API and it just says all right Drupal we're going to use the views API. So this looks like um, Yeah, so that basically, is that, is that a big enough size? Does it need to be bigger? Okay, cool. So that's it. That's the only hook that goes in your module file. Every other uh, views hook goes in a separate file called .views.inc. So that's what I'm going to get onto next. Hook views data. So this is one of those hooks, uh, like a sort of registry hook, not a doing something hook. So it's not like you're implementing something, it's just like I'm um, just telling Drupal about something. So um, this, this example, by the way, is just, uh, I just created like a really, really like simple e-commerce uh, module. So there's just like a product table and an orders table and an order detail table. Um, and what I'm doing here is, um, there's uh, an array in this hook that you uh, add your tables to. So the first thing you have to do is you have to say um, like what the, the base table is. So that's like the thing that you're creating the views from. So we're creating a view from the product table and we tell it about what, what group it's in, um, which is basically just like for the UI. Um, so that you can um, filter based on um, these fields. So the, the group looks like this. So that's, that's what that does, just allows you to filter the fields that you're adding. And then Use, um, yeah, you can use a different database here as well. Like you can actually tell it like to, there's, a, there's a database key that you can add to this array that just like says I'm not connecting to the default um, Drupal SQL database. 
Um, so if you want to do that, you can just like set it up like any other database that you would in settings.php. Um, it's got to be like the same type as your Drupal database though. And you can't, you can only, you can't do cross database joins um, if you're using a different database. So, hmm. so uh, for views to be able to use your table, it's got to be a base table, or it's got to know, it's got to know how to get back to a base table. So, when it comes to setting up relationships, you have to use this thing called a join key. Which basically says, um, like, these tables are available for views to join on. So, I think I can't work out if it's better to show you in this code or just show you on a slide. Um, so, it's fine, loads of code really hard to take in in a presentation. Let's see. So, what? Hang on. I can get it to go the right way. Yeah, there we go. So, I've got these three tables. I've got a product, which is the base table, and then I've got orders, and I've got order details. And they're all connected to each other by uh, primary keys and foreign keys. And how you um, tell views about this um, is, um, does that look all right? To, can you, does that, does that, is that totally illegible? Is it okay? All right, cool. So we've got... Um, so if it's... If it's a table, yeah, if the table is right next to the product, like all the details is, then all we need to do is say what the primary key and the foreign key um, IDs are. So that would be the left field. So... so. like one hop away from product, we have to tell it what the table is to the left. So we always have to go back to the base table. So we've got here, um, that's how, and then, then views knows that it can join on those tables. And I think the default one is left, but there's a type, a join type. So if you want, you can say, I don't want to do a left join, I want to do an inner join or something. So, and, then, and then you can create views on these tables. So, like I have done. So, I've got a view now of all these join tables. Just, I mean, the data is like, just, I just made it up. But it's just like a view of my products and orders. Um, not very good test data. And then, uh, for each field in your tables, uh, we've got these things called handlers. They do stuff on the query, so like uh, filtering and sorting and handling contextual filters, things like that, arguments. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, like, for example, on this field that I'm telling you about, the product ID, um, we've got um, some uh, filter handlers, which is, um, uh, like, allowing you to... Uh, it controls how um, you might use this field when you're uh, filtering on it, if that makes sense. And then sort handlers and argument handlers. Um, and then if you want, like if, 
like say if you're filtering on a particular value but you don't like the, um, the way that filter is exposed you could customize that for example like I'm trying to like think of, it might be better just to show an example actually like, like I've got this I've got this like this view here of all these products and say like I want to um, say I don't know like see all orders for a given product or something like that you'd filter on a product ID so yeah so I'd add filter criteria like then here like um, I have to say what the product ID is so maybe I'd have to know like oh I don't know like I've, I've got some like iPhones in my shop I need to know what the product ID of that is so I'll put in uh, didn't work. Did I save it? No! <laughs> Thanks. That means people are paying attention and I'm making sense. Awesome. Yeah, so I filtered it. I filtered it by a product. And like my example of how it might be nice to create a custom filter handler is like say, like this is like commerce Kickstarter or something like that and you want to allow people to create their own views like you want to allow people to create a view of like all the orders for a given product or whatever but you don't want people to have to know like what is the product ID like you don't want people to have to know that an iPhone is like ID 1 or whatever so what you could do is like this filter form here but all of this stuff is totally customizable so like when you add your own filter you can override this um, and all the handlers that are available for you to choose from are in the views module itself so they're all in they're all in here you can basically just pick the one that's closest to what you want and then copy it and override it so I found one uh, that's just checking uh, that just filters on equality like a value is or isn't you know if it is this then show it if not then don't and I copied that so yeah so we've got this form um, which is like an exposed filter form and it's it's got a text field so you just you just put in a value in there and, and then that will be the thing that filters the view so I'm overriding this form um, to make it a little bit nicer for people building product views um, and what I've done is I hope this makes sense is like I've got all the products and then I've overridden this um, value form method and I've built like a list of the product names in a select list so when you go and filter now you can filter on the actual product title so I'll, I'll just it's, it's commented out I'll just have to uncomment it to show you Hang on. Yeah, I did. I set it up, so I'll just uncomment it, and it might work. I don't know. And the custom handler just lives in the, the, you know, the custom module directory. I've put it in its own views directory, but that's not a requirement. So it has to be any any like extra plugins that you create and stuff. And handlers have to live in the info file. They have to be included. So I'm going to do that as well. And then I don't I don't actually know if I just go back to the view, it will work. But I'm going to try. I might have to recreate a new one. I remove it. Oh. 
work. Do you think I should clear the cache? <laughs> You've always got to clear the cache, haven't you? Even if it's just superstitious. It gets better. This, don't like this gets better than this. If we've got an internet connection, then it will be even better. Right. Okay. I don't know. I'll change it to, just to show you. Let's change it to Game of Thrones box set. Save it. Then you can see that there's only one order for that for that product. Okay. Uh, there's lots of different types of handlers. Um, uh, I can find the PowerPoint. Yeah, there's um, like sorting ones, relationship ones. I don't know massively loads about relationships with views. Um, I still, in my head, think that a relationship is the same as a join, but it, but it's not. Uh, I still think it is. Um, but I, I, yeah, I don't really have anything else on handlers. Um, one thing I did, one thing I do have in my notes is, um, like, as well as as well as using that um, hook views data to expose um, if you've got custom entities, like, um, if you're registering an entity with hook entity info, um, if you tell it there's like an entity default views controller class. And if you tell it to use that in the, in the registry hook, then I think the fields on your entity will just be available anyway. So I'm sure I've used that before. I just thought I'd mention that. Then, OK, some more hooks. So like, say, for example, you don't have control over the, um, the view or the query, like it's from a country module or something like that. Um, you might want to use one of these to um, make amends to somebody else's tables that they've registered with views or the query maybe, for example. So that's when you could use those two hooks. Just thought I'd mention those as well. So now we're getting on to the more exciting bit. Um, plugins, um, they're kind of like handlers um, in that they do stuff to views, but um, I'd say that they're not like view, um, handlers I see as being more like operating on the data and the query. And I see plugins as being uh, like, they, I don't know, like they seem to have like a, a broader scope. Uh, they, do more, they do more stuff. Basically, um, like a really like there's different kinds. There's like display plugins. Um, well the, the query plugin is the most interesting one to me because that's the one that actually like tells views what like what the back end is. And, like you can change the back end if you want. You don't have to use the default SQL database. Um, like the, there's a really nice example actually of a contrib module called. Does anyone know Entity Views Attach? Like, I absolutely love that module. Like, it's so nice. It just does one thing and it does it so well. It's just like, um, in an, it's a display plugin, but like, in a nutshell, like, what it does is, like, it extends the um, Views plugin display handler um, to add options to the View Builder form. Uh, so we can associate this view with a particular entity on a particular bundle. And then it turns the view into a field. So um, on the entity in question, um, using the hook field extra fields, I think. So it's basically like a view is a field. Like, that's just ace. Like, I really love that module. Um, so I thought about doing a demo of a plugin. And then I thought, like, which one shall I learn about? And like, which one is the most interesting? And out of all of these, it's definitely the query one. So um, uh, I decided to do another demo. Um, hopefully it will work. Uh, which was uh, doing like an alternative back-end views where I'm going to try and query the Twitter API. 
Um, so I don't really have time to go into all of these different kinds, so I'm just going to focus on one, I think. Um, so So, um, what we're going to do is uh, directly build a query with views and then uh, send it to the external API, the Twitter API, and then present the results on the front end. Uh, by the way, full disclaimer, this is taken from a Lullabot tutorial that I found by uh, Greg Dunlap, who I think is HeyRocker on Drupal.org, so I just read it and I liked it, but they did it with um, Flickr, but I thought I would change it and do it with Twitter API, so I'll just go through it. So, just set up this um, little test module called uh, Twitter search module. So, the first thing that we have to do again is just tell Drupal that we're using the views API. So, in the dot module file, uh, here's this hook. Uh, and just um, as an aside, like you don't have to tell Drupal where your um, implementation of views hooks are. If you just put it in the um, like the same level as your module file, it will just detect it. If you want to put it somewhere else, then you have to tell it and use that path key. Then, then we need to we need to describe our plugin to views. So we just do that with another hook, um, hook views plugins. Uh, we just say we're going to um, use this custom query ha um, handler here. That's all that's doing. Um, and then, again, like we've seen before, we have to implement hook views data, which is a bit weird because views seems very much set up to work with tabular data. And this isn't. This is like coming back from an API, but you still have to kind of like pretend as if you're working with tables. So you still have the table key, so. Uh. Yeah, so you still have to sort of pretend that you've got a base table. Um, we haven't, so I just used the module name as the table here. And then I've got two fields that I want to present. I want to present the, the main body of the tweet, which is um, just, it's actually in the response, it's called text. And then the username, the person who made the tweet. So, um, and then, ah, there's two extra things that you have to do. Like, because these aren't actual SQL uh, database tables, you can't use the normal field handlers. So you have to override and create your own custom field handler for this as well, which is a bit weird. Like, but hang on. So I'll just, I'll just explain that briefly. It's not, I don't exactly know what this is doing. All I can say is, the only thing that we're doing, uh, there's a lot of uh, table-specific functionality happening in this query method, and this just stops that from happening. So I haven't even, probably, I don't know, I could comment it out and it might still work, but, so, yeah. But I don't really know what this, this is. I can't say, but it just... It just works with it. So it's a bit of cargo core programming there for you. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we've done that. We've exposed the fields. Now we're getting to the cool bit. Okay, we're actually going to create the custom query plugin. So. We include it in the info file. That's um, Twitter search plugin query dot ink. Create our own implementation here, and then okay, 
Right, there are two, two methods that you, well, you could probably override some more, but there are two methods that I'm overriding that is the bare minimum to get it to work. So there's uh, the query method, which um, I think is actually building an SQL query, or there's lots of SQL stuff happening in there. So we just want, we don't want anything like that. We don't want anything like that to happen, so we just override it and don't do anything in it. And then the execute method is like the bit that's actually getting the data. So execute is just, I mean, the the Twitter bit's like kind of a bit off topic, but it's just going to Twitter and saying, can you get me all the tweets tagged with the hashtag Drupal Camp London? And then, yeah, basically, it's just putting it into a format that viewers expect, so that's that bit. And then, in theory, hopefully, if I go, I have to create a few first. Create a page. Continue with it. I'll add the uh, username. I don't know why that was added there already, but. Right, come on, work. So, so the, the really cool bit is like, because I've um, just, I think I might be running out of time actually. I want to show this bit as well. I'm on 28 minutes, so I'm all right. Like for a query, there's also an options form that allows you to pass things to it, like so you can parameterize things. So you might want to like, for example, your auth to tokens and your like your API key and secret and stuff. You could configure the query and actually have a form to input that rather than hard coding it all in here. And you can, you can do that with the um, like, uh, query string parameters as well. So like, there's, there's two methods further down, which I've commented out for um, doing this. Uh, just don't comment them. We've got um, an option definition and an options form, which if you override these, um, allows you to add, you know, your config settings for your plugin. So it's just basically just building a form and saying, uh, we just add in this, this property hashtag uh, to the plugin. And then up here, instead of hard coding it, we'll just read it from that options array. Right. I commented out something wrong. Oh yeah, hang on. <laughs> Couldn't even see that. Right. Comment out this one, isn't it? So I'm just gonna do a cache clear. Right. Wonder will it work? What I hope to see now is like in this weird like other like no man's land of views which I never use like you might you'll, you'll get this form and like now you can put in what you want so uh, what shall I search for what's trending on Twitter right now probably like Justin Bieber or something so <laughs> Now. 
Um, yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, Justin Bieber! <laughs> gonna be getting near the end so hang on I want to leave some time for questions but have some more slides uh, hmm. yeah, this one this is weird like ages ago I remember needing to do this like I remember maybe like it might even have been in Drupal six days like I remember needing to access a view directly and kind of put it somewhere like maybe like create a template variable or do something with it but like especially with stuff like entity views attached where you can do all of the sort of layout of a view and like the, the granularity of it being a field like I don't actually need to do this like but I just thought I'd mention it because not I don't know does everybody know that you can do that like in your code you can use these methods and actually access a view object and then you can you can call views get view result and that'll give you like the I think just like a big blob of the HTML of the view result does it does anyone why would you need to do that I don't know yeah I don't know Oh yeah, like um, I said I was going to mention Drush commands, I could only really think of one, <laughs> like that was Drush views dev, um, which just sets up views to be a bit more developer friendly, so um, it like uh, shows like the out, it will automatically configure it to show like the output of the query and um, like the SQL I mean and like uh, uh, performance statistics and stuff like that, so Drush VD is quite good. Um, and then... I know, I know, it's like one of my favourite Drush commands ever, like after, I think it's the third, after Drush DRE and Drush FU, Drush FU is number one. <laughs> and then um, some good contribute modules that I like, uh, Devel Contrib, does anyone know about that one? I just found out about it and it's like, it's like what you imagine. It just gives you a devel tab and a, like chrono output of the view object, which is nice. Um, there's lots of modules that do uh, like a similar thing to that query plugin, like provide alternative data sources for views. There's one that looks really good and it's called views XML backend. Um, and then there's views expose tables, which is like, I think it's like a UI to expose data as opposed to doing it in that hook. Um, there's another one that I don't, I don't know, I just found and thought I'd list it called Views Cache Bully. I don't know, it looks quite good. Um, and that's it. That's it, it's the end. Thanks.